So、uh, we just finished reading、um, Natsu Monogatari by Miko Kawakami.、Uh, the title can be roughly translated as Nats Story Summer Tales, or The Summer's Tale, if you want to pay respect to William Shakespeare.、Uh, this is a book about the painfully you know, inspiring,、uh, growing process of.、Uh, Aspiring young female writer. And、um, it actually reminds us of、um, you know,、um, many world literature,、uh, including、uh, the portrait of an artist as a young man by James Joyce.、Uh, you know, I found many really deeply rooted similarities between this novel, wonderful novel by Mieko Kawakami and、um, This masterpiece by James Joyce,、uh, in that、uh, both of them deal with、uh, the inner struggle and you know, growing pains of an aspiring young artist as he or she、uh, lives through life, meeting people, parting with people, and you know,、uh, trying to find a n s w e r to this very important question who? He or she is. I mean, you know, it's really difficult for anyone to establish himself or herself in this world. And it is all the more difficult for an artist to do that because, you know,、uh, after all, for an artist to live is to create or to express. And in that very difficult setting,、um, one would find many poignant、uh, moments of.、Um, Serendipities and、um, revelations,、uh, epiphany, and you know. So, this novel, mind you, is set in、uh, modern Tokyo. And you know,、uh, the writer,、um, Natsuko, is a、uh, protagonist, and she's a writer from, originally from Osaka. So,、uh, Osaka and Tokyo are the Main, two, two main cities、um, involved in this.、Uh, so, in that sense, this is a tale of two cities actually, Osaka and Tokyo.、Um, but you know, so the setting is quite different from James Joyce's、uh, masterpiece. So, Dublin and Tokyo, and also the social and historical contexts are also different. But, you know,、um, but I do find some deeply resonating、um, similarities between this book and.、Uh, The, this masterpiece by James Joyce.、Um, in this novel, you hear multiple voices.、Um, you hear many、uh, inner yokes,、uh, if you like,、uh, of people who are trying to live their life fully despite difficulties. And it's that symphony of these multiple voices that is so moving. In the end,、um, the、um, you know, Hundred Years Solitude by M- Marcus is cited in this book, and I think there are actually similarities.、Uh, the fictional novel that、uh, Natsuko is writing <coughs> refers to is apparently、uh, a novel which encompasses. Many generations as people live and die and live and die and live and die. So, you know, it's about voices of people who are living and also probably dead or probably did not exist from the beginning. So, this is a novel of living humans as well as、uh, those who have passed away and also those who. Probably didn't make it to this world. So, this wonderful harmony of multiple voices is a really、um, you know, a rewarding characteristic of this Miego Kalkami's masterpiece. Now,、um, I think my, one of the main themes of this novel is feminism or how women、uh, live in. Contemporary Japan and the world. And when you say feminism,、uh, you conjure up a certain 
connotations, but um, I, I think it is really important for us, or for all of us, to consider, you know, feminism or the life lives of women as something really essential when you think about uh, the principles of life itself. Um, you know, Haruki Murakami has this quotation for this novel, which I think is really rare. As you know, uh, Haruki Murakami is a really uh, media shy person, so he rarely makes any comments uh, in Japanese media. Um, so this is something really unusual. So this shows that Haruki Murakami uh, recognizes Mieko Kawakami as a very important writer. But in, when you uh, compare these two writers, actually they are very similar pro uh, properties. Uh, between uh, Mieko Kamiki and Mieko Kawakami and uh, Haruki Murakami, I think. Uh, in this novel, uh, there are pages where you feel as if you are experiencing something similar to Haruki Murakami's best books. Um, something that touches upon the very core of human existence and something that hinges upon uh, really intricate uh, dynamics of the most abstract and yes, most tangible uh, conceptual uh, movements and you know which reveals the very core of humanity which astonishes us as well as uh, heals us and you know so so it will be a really interesting uh, comparison uh, to make uh, between uh, Mieko Kawakami and Haruki Murakami but when you put these two great novelists within the feminist context, I think there will be really interesting points to be made. Uh, of course, uh, Miyako Kawakami is a female writer, and Haruki Murakami is a very male writer. I, I, I'm not saying that he's masculine. Uh, maybe Haruki Murakami is masculine uh, in his writings, but this comparison between these two writers uh, reflects the time that have passed between uh, Haruki Murakami and Mieko Kawakami. And also, it reflects the change in zeitgeist, if you like, uh, that we are all experience, experiencing in this era of Black Lives Matter and cancel culture. So this book, although I do not discuss the main plot itself, uh, is a wonderful... Uh, wonderful presentation of what is possible uh, in a post-feminism era, where we really take this issue of male-female asymmetry and uh, inequality and the fact that uh, life is mainly a female phenomenon because after all, without females, none of us can be born. So um, this is a really interesting book to you know, take note from that respect too. Now, uh, the title of this novel is Natsumo no Atari, which can be translated as a Summer Stories or The Summer's Tale, which I think is appropriate because Mieko Kawakami is an uprising international writer and, you know, maybe The Summer's Tale would be a nice title because, you know, I, I'm not sure if under what title uh, this novel is being translated, but you know, the, the summer's tale would be a wonderful, you know, um, reference to the winter's tale, of course, by William Shakespeare. So it will make a really nice uh, counterpoint, so to speak. Um, so anyway, uh, this is a really nice book and wonderful book, and I really enjoyed reading it. And uh, if you are somebody who can read some Japanese, uh, yeah, Japanese language, <laughs> this is a book worth reading. And if you are not fortunate enough to understand Japanese, wait until this book is translated into English, French, Spanish, and other languages. This is a great book to read. I have been Ken Mogi, a neuroscientist, writer, broadcaster, and comedian from Tokyo. See you around.